Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Mod Jam 5. I'm not affiliated with anyone from Mod Jam, nor was I asked to do this video for anyone but me. This video is intended to give a sample of some, if not all, of the entries in Mod Jam 5. Please vote for your favorite and check them out. Links are in the description below. Lastly, don't base your opinion of the mods entirely on what I do or don't show here, as I'm not an expert on these mods. These mods, and myself, may not be in working order and are to be considered potentially work in progress, like myself. There are four categories, solo mods, team mods, solo maps, and team maps. This video is to represent the solo mods. This mod is called Text Adventure Commands by Fayberry Jam. This somewhat turns uh, Minecraft into a text-based adventure, kind of, and you actually can interact with the world. You type in slash text adventure and you can see the different commands here. Commands to try out, look, get, inventory, drop, attack, rummage, chop, eat, and win. So for example, let's try look. You're near a village. There are creatures nearby. Fishermen. There are items nearby. Stone pickaxe, seeds, seeds, bread, oak, wood, planks, raw salmon. Get seeds. I don't see a seeds nearby. Oh dear. All right. Oh, hey, what if I do, uh, let's see, attack fisherman. Oh, there we go. I gave him a good punch. You hit the fisherman for one point of damage <laughs> with my torch, of course. If I use my wooden axe, move a little closer, repeat that. Seven points of damage. Ooh. Now, what if I do rummage? You rummage around, you find nothing. Well, what if I look at some grass? Ooh. I rummaged around and found some flint. Well, it just happened to be a rummage command. Nothing to do specifically with grass, but you might break something nearby to do that. So you can see the general idea. You can actually eat bread. You lick the wooden axe. Yes. <laughs> Let's try eating. You eat the bread. There we go. I ate the bread even though I was already full. But you, you can now can see how there's a bit of interaction with this. It's real world, but also text adventure based. And most importantly, you win. You won! Text Adventure Commands by Fayberry Jam. Welcome to the Cactus Mod by Mr. Bisco. As you can see, I am wearing cactus armor, which gives me no armor, but it does give me a Thorns 2 effect uh, by default. So therefore, just running around grabbing a bunch of cactus early on if you're near a uh, desert can be beneficial. Uh, there are also cactus tools and bows. Shoots knockback spikes, which is really cool. Um, let me grab some arrows, actually. Uh, not those. Get rid of that. All right, there we go. So you can actually uh, shoot arrows, but yet, yeah, as with this mod, almost everything you do, interact with whatever, is probably going to hurt you. There, there's, there's a a shield even that you can use that kind of has cactus going on there, which is, it actually looks kind of cool. I gotta say, a lot of the stuff in this mod looks really cool. Cactus pickaxe, yes, it works very slowly, but um, more like a wooden pickaxe, but it also will occasionally hurt you uh, on, on occasion, yes. Uh, cactus sword, uh, cactus bow, cactus hoe, cactus axe, yes, it's all there, plus uh, cactus juice. Uh, a Jono Lantern, which is made from uh, a carved cactus, which is made from just a regular cactus in a crafting grid. You've got tons of options in this mod. Uh, in fact, you even have cactus cows. Let me get this off my inventory here. Cactus cows you'll find naturally in the desert. Uh, you can therefore shear them and get a bunch of cactus and turn them back into a regular cow. <laughs> Um, there are other things that you can do, like take a Jono Lantern with these prickly iron blocks which they are crafted with a bunch of iron and cactus in order to get these. Take a uh, John O'Lantern on top and create yourself a cactus golem, which is uh, going to be very prickly just to walk into. As you can see, I'm taking some hits. Not, not so good. Uh, but uh, then there's also the cactus dispenser, which, you know, on occasion will shoot... See if I can actually, there it goes. It, it shoots a little uh, needle attack out of it. It's it's kind of random, like every few shots or something. There's the Cactus TNT. I'll set that off shortly. Actually, you know what? Why not? Let's just do it right now. Uh, let me grab this and put it, oops, in the wrong spot. There we go. Set it off, and it, it sets out a shower of spikes. 
instead of damaging terrain, which can be beneficial. You know, therefore, you've got something a little bit more interesting. Actually, I really like the, uh, the cactus TNT. You've got your cactus chest, which... Uh, slowly over time will start voiding items. Uh, you've got cactus carpet, which will hurt mobs uh, that are on top of it. So if I get some cows... Oh boy. Uh, oh, there you go. Actually, he's a really good demonstration. He just walked all over that. Uh, so he took some damage. Uh, there's also cactus cake, which uh, if, if I end up getting myself injured uh, enough to actually need to eat, I will start... It, it it hurts to eat, basically, is the idea. Um, a cactus hopper, which when you put items in it, it will void them uh, randomly, sort of like the cactus chest does over time. A uh, cactus carpet, when you drop tools or, or just whatever on them, it will automatically destroy them after two minutes instead of your normal default vanilla five. And here we go, cactus cake. Ow, it hurts to eat. Ow, it hurts to eat. Then you've got cactus bricks, which are just a variant. Uh, if you go with cactus bricks, recipe for those is the normal standard recipes for the blocks. But then the uh, bricks themselves are made with cactus green and bricks. So it's just basically green colored bricks. Uh, then you've got a door, a cactus door, which <laughs> cactus door is made with, you guessed it, cactus. You open it. It hurts, <laughs> as does most things in this mod. There is a cactus minecart that I can use, and it hurts to ride it. I'm not going to ride it anymore because it hurts. Uh, then, then, as you see over here, we have your John O'Lantern's carp cactus and, of course, the famed creeper ca cactus creeper, which, when they blow up, they shoot spikes instead of blowing up the terrain. So, once again, I, I actually really like that mob quite a lot. Um, so there you go, the Cactus Mod by Mr. Bisco. This mod is called Transistor, after the game Transistor, in case you didn't already know about it. And it has a lot of different options with what you can do on this. Uh, you basically get the Transistor weapon if you can craft it, which it's a little expensive. But it is quite the ultimate weapon, uh, as well as tool. Uh, so it is... <laughs> Very, very uh, strong at times. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can actually configure this with all sorts of different abilities that can all work together, put in some passives, uh, level it up with different memory about amounts and so on. Choose the different effects that you want to actually have. In this case, I'll do crash, and then I can just, like, you know, destroy blocks as well as uh, swipe enemies. And it does have a little bit of a cooldown and an energy uh, amount in here. Over time, it will recharge. You just need to wait for it. There it goes. And it is fully charged again. It has tons of really cool abilities, too, like teleportation, uh, launching uh, different kinds of uh, fireballs or uh, shooting arrows, uh, regular mining and stuff. It's really, really good, and it's <laughs> just it, it, it's, it holds true to the, uh, the game look at the very least, and it is called Transistor by Latvian Modder. This is Trebuchet by Kaut970. You create this device here, which is a trebuchet plan. It's a very simple contraption, and all it does is create a ghost of the area of where it's actually going to be. Now keep in mind I'm in creative right now. Uh, and you then need to supply it with 32 strings, 16 iron ingots, etc, etc, all these different items here just by right-clicking with those in your inventory, and it will take all of them, and it will create a trebuchet. How to use it? Well, you just pull the, you just kind of right click and it launches. And you'll see it lands on target as expected with the trebuchet. Now, let's actually take a look at that a little bit better here. If you actually right click on this, it will do a really cool animation, full reload, and then it will launch and launch the item way out a very good distance. And it will only, uh, as far as I'm able to test at least, uh, aim in the direction that you currently have it. It does not have an option to turn at this point, but it's really cool nonetheless. Now, if I reload this and I put something like, let's say, a chicken, if I can here, down on this area, let's put down an entity. Oh, oh, I accidentally right-clicked before it was uh, uh, ready to do so. So let's 
Shift right click a chicken and then I will right click the uh, the wind up. We'll see what happens here if it will actually launch the proper entity. There we go. Chicken away. And as you can see, chickens, they, they float down gently. But you could always throw some other entities. I don't think that it's uh, it works with players, but it's very entertaining and really cool nonetheless. There you go. Trebuchet by Kout970. This mod is called Underwater Rails by Henneman. And this one, as the name states, creates an, a way of having underwater railways. Because if you are not familiar with it already, if you try placing a regular rail in water, it just pops off like a torch does. This allows you to actually kind of circumnavigate that, uh, basically placing these down, creating an empty space. Now here's, here's the thing, there are two different blocks, the underwater rail, basic, which uh, the recipe is just a regular rail plus slime ball, will allow you to at least place them underwater. Problem is, um, well, you are still prone to drowning. Now the other one, the underwater rail advanced, which is just a little bit more gla glass panes on top of that, essentially will allow you to breathe underwater while this happens. So allow me to demonstrate. As you can see, I have hearts and hunger meter all set up and a rail cart to go. Uh, I'm going to be going in and out of both of these. Right now we've got the advanced to start with. And then I have more of the advanced here. I'm just going up above so that I actually have a little bit of uh, a powered rail to go with. Of course, there may be some underwater issues with squid, as may be the case in the past, but... And yes, you can get off the cart in the water, and you can proceed to just kind of mosey along as you would like before. I do not have any... Uh, uh, vision of um, powered rails as of yet. Perhaps that's something that may come further in this mod, but as you can see I'm on the regular basic rail. There we go. And I'm up and out. Good as gold. The only problem is you'd probably have to watch out for any kind of squid <laughs> or other sea monsters out there. Well there you go. Underwater Rails by Henneman. This mod, for those that are familiar with the Doctor Who series, will probably be ecstatic or extremely frightened. Uh, this is <laughs> Doctor Who Weeping Angels mod by Sub. Now this one is kind of a horror edition, uh, at least in my opinion, because it's filled with jump scares. Uh, but it is a um, basically just a new mob called a Weeping Angel. And if you're not familiar with the television series called Doctor Who and the Weeping Angels therein, uh, basically these paintings that you see can spawn them. I will explain what they are in a moment. Also, you may find something like this, a uh, an arm in snow. The snow I added, it's not part of it. It's just, you know, an arm in snow is how it's probably going to be found, most likely in a snow biome. I would, I would suppose I did not actually go exploring. I just figured I'd make it look a little bit more dramatic. But the idea is when you spawn one of these guys in, uh, that that's actually a very small one. That's Really, really creepy. Um, so they they will stay there looking afraid and quiet, and you can look at them. They've got a lot of health and so on. You can try hitting them, but you end up hurting yourself because they're made of stone. Uh, they're basically a statue. Now, if you uh, look away, see, you must look away from the angel or else you get injured. Uh, so if you look away, eventually bad things can happen. Uh, Oh, gosh, she's every single time it gets me. And they will follow you around. Oh, my gosh, the, the creepiness. Um, and uh, until you look at them again, then they will freeze. Oh, I, I have not experienced the, the, the small children ones before. The, that's pretty bad. Uh, so anytime that you're not looking at them, they will follow you. Uh, if you're within range, of course. And then you'll, you'll get, jeez, scared of them. The only way to defeat them is with a pick. So make sure that you always have a pick with you, but you must look away or else it's going to get you uh, because then it, it will it will kill you and inject you at that rate. So you, you can't always look at the angel. You must have some time where you're not looking at it or else you're going to be uh, done for. We're just going to wait for it in here. Maybe it'll go away. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Baby zombie. Okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. Jeez, oh, Pete. Oh, my gosh. 
that 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 was a big one that that got uh, fractured. Anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, I I I died. So that that's the idea behind it. Make sure that you uh, kill those guys good for you. And there you go. Uh, weeping Doctor Who Weeping Angels mod by sub. This mod is called World of Boxes by Dark Cow, and it basically adds in the box world of boxes. And it's more just a, a prank joke kind of thing that was created, and uh, they they wanted to kind of make it a little bit more than it possibly could be, making as much as they could out of cardboard boxes. So you place it down, you right click, things happen. Generating boxes inside of boxes, comprised of boxes, made from boxes to create a world of boxes. There we go. I just need to shift click it and it opens up. Then you just kind of right click to get inside. And in this case, I'm in a world of boxes where just about everything is kind of box themed. Um, going into creative mode so that I can uh, fly around and show this a little bit. Uh, you can see that the grass has been turned into boxes grass, so it's more or less a, a texture change. If I were to uh, try and break them, it instead turns into a, a World of Boxes grass variant, so it's not what you think. Underneath, though, is uh, cardboard or regular uh, world gen, but if you go over here, you can probably see things like some of the trees have changed in some ways. Uh, I mean, the world gen is still, like I said, a little bit of a work in progress, but it has <laughs> oak painted cardboard, etc. Uh, even some of the mobs may have some different uh, texture changes in in mind. But it, that was basically the idea here: is that uh, everything becomes a world of boxes. And if you look up at the sky, it's actually just. One large cardboard box opening, because you're inside of a giant box. That's pretty much how things work here in the world of boxes. There you go. Even a boxed zombie. Or several boxed zombies, as the case may be. This mod is World Paint by Pricea1. It's got a lot of different options for it, and it's very configurable. Uh, to start with, you'll have things like color pickers, which are crafted with a little bit of iron and iron nugget, and it will allow you to uh, pick colors for your different tools that you may use. Things like a paintbrush, paintbrush, string, iron nugget, and a stick. You may need multiples of these, and each one will have a different effect. You can also just make some paint, which is just some slime ball and a water bucket, plus uh, once you've made that, you can then take it plus a color picker, for instance, if I take this plus some of the regular paint, it will then turn it black, and it's good to go. And you can actually choose your color picker. Let's grab this white one here by default. I can choose here, and I can drag it around anywhere I want, as well as change the bright or dark factors of this. Uh, let's go with something somewhat uh, pink, I guess. That that looks about right. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we'll we'll brighten that up. There we go. We now have a pink color picker. Uh, which then I can take over here, combine it with a piece of paint, and I can get some pink. Uh, it says color unknown, but you get the basic idea. We've got green, red, yellow, um, some kind of cyan. You, you, you can get all sorts of stuff in here. And if you use a paintbrush, as you can see here, you get some very bright and brilliant colors. Uh, if you can access the block, you should be able to color it relatively well. And it won't color everything. It might actually just change the hue of the block a little bit if it doesn't have that kind of option available to it. Uh, but you notice some of the edges of here are a little bit uh, darker. If I were to use something like, uh, well, let's say this paint blob here. It's usable as kind of an explosion of an area. But you'll also notice that it's a lot fainter. If I use the same red paint here, it actually is nowhere near as brilliant as the paintbrush itself. But each color may actually have different properties depending upon how you use them. And they act as different uh, layers as well. So sometimes one will overlap another uh, and cause some kind of, uh, you know, just like it will override the other nearby color. But uh, before I get into the different effects of those, there's also painting boots, uh, which once you put them on, you then walk around, and I currently have white on these ones, so it kind of will turn the area a bit brighter, just a little bit. Uh, it, it's difficult to actually see, but if you look, you can see like a, a faint path coming up here. So that's probably your weakest uh, one there, but you can always 
Enhance those by taking leather boots, uh, plus a paintbrush that already has a color on it to get the colored paint boots that you want, and therefore you can use those to kind of walk around. And once you've got these things all over the place, different colors will have different effects. Now, yes, this can be disabled in the configs if you just want to use this as, as a decoration mod, but uh, like black will spawn hostile mobs, as you can see over here. Blue is bouncy and gives the player a jump boost. So there we go. Have a little fun with that. Uh, gray speeds up furnaces that are placed above the gray painted area. Uh, green turns dirt to grass. And it applies a bone meal effect to the blocks. As you can see, this is a very green area here. Uh, <laughs> then you've got orange, which is incredibly slippery. I didn't make any orange in this uh, setup here. Pink spawns non-hostile mobs per random block tick with a conf uh, and uh, did I still have that pink one? I could try it. It doesn't say that it was actually um, going. It, it said that it was unknown, so I don't think that I quite had it set for pink, though. If I did, that would be a lot of uh, non-hostile mobs coming out. Red burns non-undead mobs. So in this case, that this is probably going to really hurt some chickens or something like that. There you go. Yep, drop down a chicken and they instantly start burning. So that, that's bad. It will also uh, extinguish undead mobs. Uh, then white gives the invisibility effect. So... If I go over here and I hit F5 and I land on white, I'm invisible. And of course, uh, yellow over here will feed the player and give uh, some kind of health boost while they're on there as well. And that's pretty much it. Uh, whoops, I'm, I'm kind of invisible there. But hey, uh, there's also, oh, I forgot a paint scrubber, which is very important because if you want to clean up your mess, you then can clean an entire area just by kind of clicking this around a bit and cleaning up your mess when you're done, uh, should you have, uh, as I have done, tipped paint down a stairway. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. World Paint by Pricea One. This mod is Yastum, or yet another simple teleporter mod by Unreal Dinnerbone. The concept with this one is rather simple, as the name implies. There's a recipe of a bunch of eyes of ender with a piece of stone will make a tile that you can place on the ground and stand upon. Now, if you have that connected to another tile, it will teleport you, but it will not teleport other entities, as you can see here. Now, I have this one here. If I right click on it, I chose a number, number 100, and it currently has an effect when I teleport. Well, I will teleport over to that one, which also is linked to 100. This one is linked to negative 100, so you can give it your own uh, unique number that you would like. Just make sure that you have two of them together and they will connect to one another. I go over here and I get the spit, uh, <laughs> basically from a llama, it makes a circle around it. You can actually change it to, uh, you know, like, uh, let's see, large explosion instead. Boom, as you teleport over, you know, so <laughs> it can be quite a bit of fun. Uh, mob appearance, oh boy, that's kind of laggy there, a little, little crazy. But you get the idea with all the different fun that you can have with setting this up. Uh, plus, you can move to another one and go underwater over to another village and then head back over here and whoop, I'm back at the teleporters. So there you go. Yet another simple teleporter mod by Unreal Dinnerbone. This mod is called You Are the Mob by Lemon. It allows you to basically be a derpy potato, uh, or rather, it allows you to change out and be all sorts of different mobs if you so desire. Now, if you go through first person view, you will still have your arm visible, but otherwise, uh, you can still be uh, different mobs upon starting or respawning. In this case, I died. Respawn, and you can choose which one you'd like to be, from a zombie, squid, yourself, which I was a squid last time, so that's my icon there. A creeper, spider, skeleton, llama, or a blaze. In this case, let's choose a llama. There we go. I know I'm a llama, and I have a llama ability, which is spitting, as you can see here. It has a little bit of a cooldown. Each one has their own special abilities. In the case of a squid, it had water breathing and night vision. In the case of a llama, it has ranged attacks forever, as long as you uh, basically don't lose the item. And yes, you can even be the almighty blaze uh, and shoot your own little uh, fireballs. 
Starting off as a skeleton, you have Starting off as a skeleton, you will have, uh, well, vulnerability to sunlight, <laughs> uh, a unbreaking five infinity bow with ten arrows, as you can see here. And you can then start shooting those pesky humans as you normally would. And yes, even as a creeper, you have the ability, which is going to be one big fun time. And of course, you can turn back into yourself if you end up dying or starting off or or even respawning and therefore clean up the mess that you just made from being all these other mobs anyway that is you are the mob by lemon this mod is called yesterdays by bms 1984 it's based upon uh the uh, music group yes and some of their uh, old albums that uh, they did there uh, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to read the description on there so that you can get a bit of the history on this. But the idea is to go throughout uh, Minecraft without killing things, or at least not too many unless you absolutely have to, because everything has a soul, and therefore you do better this way. And when you die, you are reincarnated, perhaps, with better powers and abilities. In this case... I have gained uh, a speed up and a bit of a jump assist and so on. Uh, it can be very beneficial to be leading a peaceful life and that of trying to achieve that of moksha, the fourth level, which can be a really interesting way of uh, trying to achieve what you're trying to do. And there you have it, all of the Mod Gem 5 solo entries. And this is not including maps or the team builds or anything like that. There's plenty more of those for you to check out. Please check out the link in the description below and go and vote on some of these wonderful mods and their projects. Be sure to check out those of the uh, the team projects as well as the map makers that have done some of those. Uh, I'm not sure that I'll be able to get videos out for those in time, but there are still a few days left uh, if you're seeing this at the time of the video being distributed. So... I hope you guys enjoyed. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others if you think that they'll enjoy this kind of content too. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya. Bye.